The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Satan, our adversary, is actively seeking to prepare the world and its people for eternal separation from God. It is imperative that we understand the spiritual battle at hand and equip ourselves to stand firm against his schemes. Let us delve into Satan's strategies and discuss how we, as followers of Christ, can respond to ensure the salvation of souls. Satan's primary weapon is deception. He distorts the truth, leading people astray from the path of righteousness through false ideologies, distorted moral values, and persuasive lies he seeks to blind the minds of unbelievers, preventing them from seeing the light of the gospel. We witness the relentless efforts to twist God's truth and promote worldly ideologies that contradict His Word. We live in a culture that is increasingly moving away from the teachings of the Bible. Our world is under the influence of the God of this world, Satan, who opposes God at every turn. This is evident in the rise of an antichrist spirit and an anti-God culture. As followers of Christ, we must recognize this truth and prepare ourselves to stand firm in the face of opposition. We find ourselves in a society where biblical values and teachings are often discarded or even mocked. The moral compass that guided generations has been replaced by a relativistic mindset where truth is seen as subjective, where every single person has their own truth that they can adhere to. The sanctity of life the sacredness of marriage and the pursuit of righteousness have been compromised and devalued. It is crucial for us to understand the gravity of this cultural drift and its implications for our faith. It is crucial for us to understand the antichrist culture we live in today. It is crucial for us to understand the anti-God culture we live in today. The reason why it is important to understand this is because if you are not careful and discerning and have the whole armor of God on, the culture we live in will change you if you are not careful. It will change the way you see the world if you are not careful. It will change your view of sin if you are not careful. It will change your view on right and wrong. The world and culture we live in is preparing us and preparing everyone in the world to move further and further away from biblical truths. For the most part, most of the stuff on the internet is sinful. Most of the TV shows and movies are sinful and unholy. TV shows have normalized fornication, adultery, and sexual immoralities. And if you are not careful, this stuff will change you. And before you know it, you are becoming desensitized to sin. The culture we live in today can push you into having a seared conscience. Things that once shocked you, no longer shock you. Things you would never do, you are now doing. Look at the world around you. There is a real satanic agenda, and Satan, who is described as the god of this world, is preparing the world. He is actively preparing us for the arrival of the Antichrist. Our worldview and beliefs are being shaped in ways that draw us away from God's truth. Sinful behaviors are being normalized, and moral values are being compromised. As followers of Christ, we must recognize the dangers of being desensitized to sin and straying further from biblical truths. The culture we live in subtly influences our worldview and beliefs, often without us realizing it. Through media, entertainment, and societal norms, the culture shapes our perception of what is acceptable and right. It is essential to be discerning and evaluate the messages we receive against the unchanging truth of God's Word. We must not allow the shifting cultural values to dictate our understanding of morality but rather anchor ourselves in the unwavering principles of the Bible. One of the greatest challenges we face in the culture's preparation is the normalization of sinful behaviors. Fornication, sexual immorality, and the acceptance of various lifestyles contrary to God's design are becoming increasingly prevalent. However, we must remember that just because the world accepts these behaviors does not mean that God does. God has specific parameters for sex, reserving it for the sacred union of one man and one woman in holy matrimony. We must uphold God's standards 
and not succumb to the pressure of the cultural moral relativism. As the culture drifts further away from biblical truths, there is a danger of becoming desensitized to sin. When sin becomes normalized and widely accepted, it loses its shock value and our sensitivity to its harmful effects diminishes. We may find ourselves compromising our convictions, engaging in behaviors that we once deemed sinful. This gradual desensitization can lead us away from God's truth and ultimately down a path of spiritual decline. It is crucial for us to be vigilant and guard our hearts against the erosion of moral values and biblical principles. Dear friends, in a culture that subtly prepares us to move away from biblical truths, we must remain steadfast in our commitment to God's Word. Let us not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. May we reject the normalization of sinful behaviors and remain sensitive to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. By holding fast to God's unchanging truth, we can navigate the subtle deceptions of the culture and walk in obedience to our faithful Lord. The Bible clearly identifies Satan as the God of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. He seeks to distort truth, sow seeds of doubt, and lead people astray from God's path. And I believe that one of the ways Satan is at work today is by simply keeping people busy with the here and now. 99% of human beings do not understand how close we are to eternity. How can you be in one world one minute and the next minute you are in the next world? People don't understand how there is but a step between this world and eternity. The way Satan keeps people busy with the allure of worldly pleasures and immediate gratification. We live in a culture that glorifies the here and now, causing many to forget the brevity of life and the eternal perspective. As Christians, we must recognize the deception and refocus our hearts and minds on things that truly matter in light of eternity. Do not fall into the trap of being too busy for eternity. Do not fall into the trap of being too busy for God. Your whole life can pass you by, and you can lose the opportunity to find God and get right with Him. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. There is coming a time where God cannot be found. Satan entices people with the allure of worldly pleasures and immediate gratification, just so people are concerned with the here and now. The fast-paced, consumer-driven culture we live in promotes the idea that this life is all there is. The pursuit of material wealth, status, and earthly success becomes the primary focus, leading many astray from an eternal perspective. It's easy to become so absorbed in the pleasures and distractions of this life that we lose sight of our ultimate purpose and destiny. Our lives on this earth are indeed fleeting, but the enemy works diligently to keep us preoccupied with the temporal. Satan wants us to believe that this life is one big party, devoid of any eternal significance. However, as Christians, we need to have a different view. We must acknowledge the brevity of our existence and the certainty of our eventual departure from this world. Our time on earth is like a mere drop in the vast ocean of eternity, and it should shape our perspectives and priorities. To counteract Satan's deceptive tactics, we must embrace an eternal perspective. We should fix our eyes on things above and focus on what truly matters in light of eternity, our relationship with God, our obedience to His Word, and the impact we make in the lives of others are eternal investments. We should seek to store up treasures in heaven rather than solely pursuing earthly riches and pleasures. Living with an eternal perspective enables us to live with a purpose and a kingdom focus. We are called to love God and love others, to spread the gospel, and to engage in acts of justice and mercy. Our time on earth should be spent investing in eternal souls, sharing the hope and salvation found in Jesus Christ. By prioritizing these eternal pursuits, we align ourselves with God's purposes and participate in building His kingdom. It is my hope that the questions posed to you stir a deep reflection within your hearts. Have you become too busy for God? Is your focus primarily on the temporary pleasures of this world rather than the eternal promises of God? Are the cares of this world and the devil's subtle tactics diverting your attention away from what truly matters? Today, I urge you to shift your focus from the fleeting concerns of this world 
to the weightier matter of your soul's eternal state. Your existence extends far beyond the mere 80 years you will spend on this earth. You are an eternal being, and your choices in this life have eternal implications. Let us recognize the urgency of the matter at hand. The Bible speaks clearly about the reality of heaven and hell, reminding us that our souls are destined for one or the other. Our fleeting earthly pursuits pale in comparison to the significance of our eternal destination. Luke chapter 12, verses 8 through 9. I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. Charles Spurgeon regarding this verse said, What Christ is to you on earth, that you will be to Christ in heaven. I shall repeat that truth. Whatever Jesus Christ is to you on earth, you will be to him in the day of judgment. If he be dear and precious to you, you will be precious and dear to him. If you thought everything of him, he will think everything of you. Just imagine Jesus Christ acknowledging you before God the Father and all of heaven. Words cannot describe how touched and moved you will be in this moment. Prioritize God on earth. Whatever Jesus Christ is to you on earth, you will be to him in the day of judgment. Is Jesus Christ last on your list of priorities or is he first? Don't allow the devil to make you too busy for God. Also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.